There have been some really good national championship teams over the last 20 years. Well, actually, I mean, every team that's won the national championship has been pretty good. But there are clearly some that have been better than others. We've had teams claim titles, we've had the BCS, and we've had the college football playoff. So it's been a pretty eventful 20 years to say the least. Today I'm going to be ranking every national championship team from worst to the best since the year 2000. Before we get to the countdown, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you love college football, this is definitely the place for you. And make sure to turn on those notifications so you never miss a video. The majority of people claim that LSU are the 2003 national champions. There are those that claim that USC is the rightful national champions of 2003. But for this video, we're going to go with the LSU Tigers. In 2003, Nick Saban's LSU Tigers led the nation in defense and allowed just 11 points a game. On the season, the Tigers had a 7-point win over number 7 Georgia, a 24-point win over number 17 Auburn, a 3-point win on the road at number 15 Ole Miss, and they took down number 5 Georgia convincingly in the SEC title game. The Tigers' lone loss of the year was a 19-7 defeat at the hands of an unranked Florida team. Now, though USC was ranked number one, number two LSU played number three Oklahoma in the Sugar Bowl, beating them 21 to 14. Now, as I mentioned, they settled for a share of the national title after the AP poll gave USC its number one spot. But, LSU was widely regarded as national champions. Amid controversy, the 2002 Ohio State Buckeyes took down what many consider to be the greatest team to never win a championship, the 2002 Miami Hurricanes. The Buckeyes took down four ranked opponents prior to the matchup with Miami, but these teams made Ohio State work for their wins. The Buckeyes won six games by fewer than seven points and could have seen their season slip up at any point. They pulled through each one and found themselves in the Fiesta Bowl against Miami. They won 31 to 24 in overtime and were crowned national champions. The Gators won in 2006 at the hands of Chris Leak, not Tim Tebow. The Gators lost once during the regular season on the road to number 11 Auburn. However, Florida scored victories over number 13 Tennessee, number 9 LSU, and Georgia to remain in the hunt for a national title. A victory over Florida State followed by a 38-28 win over number 8 Arkansas placed Florida in the BCS championship game as a significant underdog against the Ohio State Buckeyes. They took down Troy Smith, the Heisman Trophy winner, 41 to 14. We have LSU on the countdown again, but don't worry, they didn't claim this title. It was quite the season for the LSU Tigers in 2007. They went 12 and 2, but boy oh boy did they have some thrilling games. They defeated number 7 Virginia Tech by 41 points early in the season and then took down number 12 South Carolina. They then took down number 9 Florida by 4 points, which was followed by a 6-point loss on the road to number 17 Kentucky. They bounced back the following week, defeating number 18 Auburn by 6 points and then went on the road to beat number 17 Alabama by 7. In the last game of the season, LSU dropped a close one to Arkansas, losing by two points. They fell to number five in the rankings after that loss, but picked up momentum after beating number 14 Tennessee in the SEC title game. They jumped from five to two in the polls, and they played number one Ohio State in the BCS championship. They took down the Buckeyes 38 to 24. Alabama didn't play in the SEC title game, but they managed to sneak into the playoff as the number four seed. They began the season 11 0, but a loss to number six Auburn cost them a spot in the SEC title. Prior to that loss, Alabama had wins over number three Florida State, number 19 LSU, and number 18 Mississippi State. They met number one Clemson in the Sugar Bowl, defeating them easily 24 to 6. They then matched up with Georgia in the title game. A game winning touchdown from Tua Tonga Vailoa gave the tie the victory. Staying on the topic of Alabama, they won their second national championship in a row in 2012, and this one didn't come with any controversy. We'll get to that later in the video. They began the season with a 27-point victory over number 8 Michigan and cruised for the next 8 weeks, including wins over number 13 Mississippi State and on the road at number 5 LSU. They lost a close one at home to Johnny Manziel in Texas A&M, but bounced back with a 49-point victory over Auburn, a close win over number 3 Georgia in the SEC title game, and a 28-point thrashing of number one Notre Dame in the title game. Oklahoma started the season ranked 19th, but that didn't stop them from winning a national championship. They went undefeated while beating six ranked teams. Their best stretch came over three games in October as they beat number 11 Texas by nearly 50 points, followed up with a 10 point win on the road at number two Kansas State, and then defeated the number one Nebraska Cornhuskers by 17. The Sooners defeated Kansas State again in the Big 12 title game, this time by three. They then knocked off number three Florida State as they held them to only two points 
in the title game. After losing the previous few years, Alabama got back to the winning ways in 2015. Two years prior, Alabama had been badly beaten by Oklahoma, and in the first year of the college football playoff, top-seeded Alabama lost to number four seed Ohio State. In 2015, Alabama finished the job it could not do either the previous two years. Now, despite a surprisingly early loss to Ole Miss, Alabama used the best offensive line in the country and let the nation's best front seven handle business on defense. For Alabama, they won eight games against ranked opponents that season, beating number 20 Wisconsin, number eight Georgia, number nine Texas A&M, number four LSU, number 20 Mississippi State, number 18 Florida, number three Michigan State, and finally, number one Clemson. Auburn won five games in 2008. They won eight games in 2009. They won the national championship in 2010. And all that is thanks to Heisman winning quarterback Cam Newton, who gave us one of the greatest seasons we've ever seen from a quarterback in recent memory. They started the season ranked number 22, but ended it ranked number one. The Tigers went a perfect 14-0 while picking up wins against number 12 South Carolina, number 12 Arkansas, number 6 LSU, and number 9 Alabama. They dismantled South Carolina by 40 points in the SEC title game, and then went on to beat the number two ranked Oregon Ducks in the title. A year after going so close to ending their championship drought, the Clemson Tigers finally won that championship in 2016. Clemson rebounded to win their first championship in decades. Though a one-point loss to Pittsburgh looked to be detrimental earlier in the year, the Tigers still had some very nice victories. They defeated the number three ranked Louisville Cardinals, who were led by Heisman winning quarterback Lamar Jackson. They won on the road at number 12 Florida State, and then defeated number 19 Virginia Tech in the ACC title game. They were too much for Ohio State to handle, defeating them 31 to nothing in the Fiesta Bowl. Then, in the title game, they got their chance again against number one Alabama. Hunter Renfro's last second touchdown gave the Tigers the win. Now, this may be one of the craziest and least likely teams to win a national championship over the last 20, 30 years. In the national title game, Ohio State was on its third string quarterback. However, it didn't look like it won bit. Cardale Jones and the Buckeyes thrashed Wisconsin 59-0 in the Big Ten Championship, then they took down number one Alabama, and then defeated number three Oregon by 22 points in the title game. Though they had an ugly early season loss to Virginia Tech, no team has turned things around quite like the Buckeyes did. Though they didn't play any highly ranked teams in 2014 aside from Michigan State, Ohio State's domination near the end is what helps their case. Now, many people wonder whether or not the 2009 Alabama team would have won a national championship had Colt McCoy not left the game with an injury. Luckily for Nick Saban in Alabama, it doesn't really matter. They finished the season 14-0, which included wins over number 7 Virginia Tech, number 20 Ole Miss, number 22 South Carolina, and number 9 LSU. Though their win over Texas was great, their best and arguably toughest task came in the SEC title game against Florida. They snapped the Gators' nation-leading 22-game winning streak while also spoiling Tim Tebow's senior campaign in quest for a third national title. Led by Mark Ingram, Alabama's first ever Heisman Trophy winner, Alabama ended up sending 11 players through the first round of the NFL Draft in the years that followed. As I mentioned earlier, there was some controversy surrounding the 2011 Alabama team. Many people thought they shouldn't be in the title game. Well, they proved those people wrong. And ironically, it might be Nick Saban's best team to date. Though they didn't compete in the SEC title game, Alabama still finished the season 12-1. Their lone loss came to LSU by three in overtime. On the season, the Tide beat number 23 Penn State on the road by 16, number 14 Arkansas by 24, number 12 Florida by 28, and eventually the number one LSU Tigers by 21 in the title game. LSU didn't even get across the 50 yard line until the second half. It's arguably Nick Saban's best defense he's ever had as he allowed only 14 points more than once, which ironically came against Georgia Southern of all teams. They held opponents to 10 points or fewer nine times. That team had nine first round NFL draft picks. The Florida Gators won the national championship in 2008. After a loss to Ole Miss early in the season, Florida became the most unstoppable team in the country. They won on the road at Arkansas, crushed number four LSU by 30, won by 39 against number 10 Georgia, and had a 50 point victory over number 24 South Carolina. Not to mention, they also beat number 23 Florida State by 30. They then defeated number 11 Alabama by 11 points in the SEC title game. Then against number two Oklahoma, Florida pulled away for a 24-14 victory to wrap up the national title. Heisman winning quarterback Sam Bradford had one of the best offensive seasons we've ever seen from a quarterback and the Florida Gators limited Oklahoma to only 14 points. The Clemson Tigers have been one of the best teams in college football over the last five years or so and in 2018 
they were unstoppable. Now, they've had some really good squads, but none have come even close to that 2018 team. They went 15-0, including a 27-point win over Notre Dame in the playoff semifinal and a 28-point victory over Alabama in the title game, giving Nick Saban his worst loss while at Alabama. In addition to the fourth best scoring offense in the nation, their defense ranked number one nationally in scoring defense. Clemson's unit only gave up 13 points a game and led the country with 54 total sacks. Though they've had a lot of good teams in program history, none have been more dominant than the 2013 Florida State Seminoles. Now, in terms of point margin in college football history, they are the most dominant national champion as they won each game by an average of 40 points that year. They averaged 51.5 points per game, the second most in the nation while scoring the nation-leading 94 total touchdowns. Their defense was just as good as they allowed only 12 points a game. On the season, the Knowles defeated number 25 Maryland 63 to nothing, number three Clemson 51 to 14, number 7 Miami 41 to 14 and number 20 Duke 45 to 7. They capped off their season with a thrilling 3-point win over the number 2 ranked Auburn Tigers. 10 players were named All-Americans and 25 from that team went on to play in the NFL. The 2005 Longhorns snapped USC's 34-game winning streak and likely ended one of the best dynasties we've ever seen in college football. Texas was number 2 in the AP poll throughout the entire season, averaging over 50 points a game. They did have the highest scoring offense in the country. They scored over 50 points points seven different times, had early victories over a number four Ohio State, which was followed by blowout wins over Oklahoma, number 10 Texas Tech, and rival Texas A&M before beating Colorado 70-3 in the Big 12 championship game. This Texas team had four consensus All-Americans and went on to send 24 players to the NFL Draft. They also had Vince Young, who had maybe one of the best seasons ever by a player to not win the Heisman. Speaking of a USC dynasty, that USC team last won a championship in 2004. Now, after controversy as to who was the true champion in 2003, they were the clear-cut winner in 2004. The Trojans were the number one team for every week of the season and defeated Oklahoma by 36 points in the Orange Bowl to finish the season. Matt Leiner won the Heisman, Reggie Bush and Lindale White gave us one of the greatest running back duos we've ever seen in college football, and 18 players got selected in either the first first or second round of the NFL Draft. Led by arguably the greatest season we've ever seen from a quarterback, the 2019 LSU Tigers had one of the best seasons we've seen in recent memory. They averaged over 48 points a game, the most in the country. They also had some very, very impressive wins, winning seven games against teams in the top 10. They finished their season by beating Georgia, Oklahoma, and Clemson by an average of 26 points. LSU would go on to tie the NFL Draft record for a single school during a seven-round draft with 14 selections, including five first rounders. 2019's LSU squad made this a little interesting, but there's still no competition for who's number one. Not only did the 2001 Miami team beat every team they played, they absolutely dominated them. They won by an average of 33 points a game and defeated five teams that were ranked in the top 15. They defeated Nebraska by 23 in the Rose Bowl. In addition, it might be one of the most stacked college teams we've ever seen. In all, 38 players will become future NFL draft picks, including 17 future first rounders from that squad. So who do you guys think has been the best championship team over the last 20 years? Who do you think's been the worst? Drop me a comment down below and let me know. Also, rank your best championship teams from the last 20 years. They don't have to be the top 20 like I did, but they can be the top three or your top five. Again, make sure you subscribe if you're new. I post a lot of great college football content, so if you're a college football fan, a lot of great stuff here for you to check out. If you have any video ideas for me, drop a comment below and I might make a video on that one day. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my next video.